Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers alcohol nomenclature. This slide covers the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry or IUPAC rules for naming alcohols. Naming alcohols is very similar to naming alkanes. It's just a simple extension of alkane rules. So this video assumes a knowledge of alkane naming. If you're not familiar with that or it's been a while, you should go back and look at that first. To name alcohols, you need to first identify the root name or the parent name. To do this, you want to find the longest continuous carbon chain that has the OH group attached. Here's an example of an alcohol. We're going to look at two options for finding longest carbon chain. One option is shown here. Another option is shown here. The structure on the left has a 5 carbon longest chain with the OH group attached, whereas the structure on the right has a 7 carbon longest chain, but the OH group is not attached. The key with alcohol nomenclature is that the OH group must be attached to the longest carbon chain in order for it to be correct. So the structure on the left is correct. The structure on the right is not correct. Even though it has a longer carbon chain, it's not the appropriate longest carbon chain. So don't name it this way. Once you've identified the longest carbon chain, use the alkane root name, but change the ending from E to all. This structure, if it were an alkane, would be named as pentane. So what we'll do is remove the E at the end and change the name to pentanol. The parent name or root name for this molecule is pentanol. The next step in naming an alcohol is to number the chain and specify the location of the OH group. If we look at our example from the previous slide, we have our pentanol molecule. We have to first number the chain from one end to give the OH group the lowest possible number. That numbering looks like this, where the OH group is given the lowest possible number of 1. The next step is to specify the OH position. Now, there are actually two sets of IUPAC rules out there. There's the new version, which are preferred, and there's an older version that's very similar and uh, is still in wide use. We're going to talk about both because both are commonly used. You'll see both forms used in websites, in textbooks, and in various other places. Under the new rules, you put the number just before the OL at the end of the name. That would look for pentanol like this, pentane one all, where the one goes between the root name and the suffix all. Under the old rule, you simply put the number before the root name, so it would be one pentanol. Either one of these forms is acceptable and should be recognized as correct. The third step in naming alcohols is to name and number the other groups on the molecule. If we look at our example of the pentanol molecule, it has one group attached, a substituent that's a propyl group. This is a two propyl group because the propyl group's in the two position. So we'll place the groups alphabetically out in front of the root name. This is the same process as is used in alkane nomenclature. Under the new rules, this molecule would be named 2-propyl pentane 1-all. Under the old rules, it would be named 2-propyl 1-pentanol. Very similar names. The only difference is the location of the 1. In the new rules, the 1 is placed towards the end of the name, right in front of the functional group all designation. And under the old rules, the 1 is just slipped out in front of the root name itself. Molecules that have two OH groups are named as diols. Here's an example of a molecule that contains two OH groups. The first thing you need to do is to identify the main carbon chain, and the main chain has to contain both OH groups. In this example, it would be the carbon chain indicated here. Then, use the alkane root name and simply add the diol suffix to it. For this molecule, the root name would be octane diol because it's an 8 carbon chain with two OH groups, hence octane diol. Next, number the chain from one end to give the lowest possible number to the first OH group. In this molecule, that would require starting from the left-hand side and numbering as shown here, where the OH groups get 3 and 5 numbers. Now, notice that there's a substituent on the right side that occurs at what would be the 2 position, but here the preference is given to the OH group, which is really the story for alcohol nomenclature. It's really all about the OH groups, naming them as functional groups, giving them low possible numbers. The other rules for naming dials are the same. In this case, we have one additional group. It's a methyl group in the 7 position, so that would be placed out in front of the root name. Under the new rules, this molecule would be named 7-methyl-octane-3,5-diol. Under the older rules, it would be named 7-methyl-3,5-octane-diol. Again, very similar names, just the location of the numbering that specifies the OH groups is slightly different. This slide discusses naming cyclic alcohols. Here's an example of an alcohol that we can name. The first thing to do is to define the root name as a cycloalkane, and then change the E ending to all. 
In this example, if it were an alkane, it would be cyclohexane. So we change the E ending to all and we get cyclohexanol. That's the parent name, the root name. With cyclic alkanes, the OH group defines the number one position, so there's no need to number it. You don't need to specify the location of the OH group. The next thing that needs to be done is to number the ring to give the lowest possible number to the next group. Here, we would number around the ring clockwise so that the two methyl groups would get the number three. The other rules for naming cyclic alcohols are the same as for alkanes. Put the substituent names out in front of the root name. Since the OH group is defined in the number one position, the new and old rules give the same result. The name of this molecule under both rule sets is 3,3-dimethylcyclohexanol. In addition to systematic names, for simple alcohols there's a common naming scheme that is often used. Here, you name the R group and then just add alcohol to it. It's really easy. Name the R group and then simply add alcohol to the end of it. Here's some examples. This alcohol has an ethyl group attached to the OH group, so this is ethyl alcohol. Under the IUPAC naming system, this would be ethanol. Both names are commonly used. This alcohol has an isopropyl group attached to the OH group. This would be isopropyl alcohol under the common naming system. Its IUPAC name is 2-propanol, and again, both of these names are commonly used. This molecule has a tertiary butyl group, a tert butyl group, attached to an OH group, so this would be tert butyl alcohol, and under IUPAC naming, it's 2-methyl-2-propanol. Here, the common name is a bit simpler, so it's more often used. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video, and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.